my copy of The Legends of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Their stories are so important to the history of our storytelling here in Britain. They are really, really, really old and have always been very popular. I understand that King Edward liked them in the medieval times, King Edward I, and also King Henry VIII in the Tudor times. There have been so many different versions of them, written and rewritten, told and retold. I would like to tell you a short version of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table were celebrating the 12 days of Christmas. As they sat in the famous hall waiting for the festivities to begin, in rode a most unusual looking man. He was all in green. His hair was green, his armour was green, even his horse was green. He looked a very strong and powerful knight. And when he got off his horse, it became clear he was very, very, very tall. Some might even call him a giant. He declared that he had come to offer a challenge to any one of those gathered that they would be allowed to take a swing at him with his great axe, which looked extremely sharp, on the understanding that within a year and a day they would find him out and allow him to swing at them. He waited until the knights, who couldn't usually refuse a challenge, responded. After a short pause, it was Sir Gawain, King Arthur's nephew, who accepted the challenge. He stood up to take the heavy great axe and the giant once more made him promise that within a year and a day he would find him out and allow him to do the same to him. He then lifted his hair to reveal his neck and Sir Gawain with all his might swung and clean cut off the giant's head. The giant, unperturbed, picked up his head took back the axe, got back on his horse and rode out, stopping only to tell Sir Gawain that he would find him in the Green Chapel. Soon the festivities began, but King Arthur and Sir Gawain were rather subdued. A year and a day isn't that far off. And so it was. The time was almost up. A year had passed and it was Christmas again. Sir Gawain, with the King's blessing, set off on his adventure to find the Green Chapel and to face the Green Knight with his giant axe. To be honest, many in Camelot feared they may not see Sir Gawain again. The journey was long and tough. Well, it was winter, and after four long days, Sir Gawain realised he was lost. He noticed in the distance, over the hill, a castle he decided to go and beg a bed for the night. He was welcomed in by the Lord of the castle, who asked him to join their Christmas festivities. Sir Gawain agreed, but did say he could stay but one night, for he was searching for the Green Chapel. The Lord of the castle said, Why, it is a short ride away. I will show you in the morning. The next morning, however, the Lord of the castle suggested Sir Gawain should stay for a few more nights. The Green Chapel is so nearby and you look exhausted. Perhaps you should rest. Sir Gawain agreed. But then the Lord of the Castle suggested that they should agree on an exchange. I will go hunting while you rest here in my home and I will exchange with you whatever I've caught with whatever you are given during the day. Sir Gawain was a little perplexed. But he agreed, and the Lord went out hunting. As Sir Gawain rested, it wasn't long before the lady of the castle came to join him. She seemed to enjoy his company, and when she left, she insisted on giving him a kiss. Later, when the Lord came back, offering a venison and giving it to Sir Gawain, rather embarrassed, Sir Gawain gave him a kiss. The next day was similar. The Lord went out hunting, the lady of the castle came to see Gawain, but this time she insisted on giving him two kisses. When the Lord came home, he offered up the bear he had caught. Sir Gawain offered up two kisses. 
The third day was almost the same. The Lord Early went out hunting, and Sir Gawain and the Lady of the Castle sat talking and telling stories, until eventually, as she left, she offered him three kisses and a green girdle, a beautiful belt. Sir Gawain accepted the three kisses, but refused the belt. Sir Gawain, this girdle is magic, she said. It will protect whoever wears it from any kind of weapon. Now, knowing that he had to face the giant with his axe, Sir Gawain accepted the girdle. Later that day, the Lord returned with just a stinking fox skin. Sir Gawain gave up the three kisses, but he kept the girdle to himself. The next morning, Sir Gawain said his goodbyes and followed the route the Lord had told him would get him to the Green Chapel. It wasn't long before there, standing in front of him, was the giant, all in green. Sir Gawain took off his hat and stepped forward, ready to take the swing of the axe. Three times the giant swung at him. Well, the first time, Sir Gawain flinched, which made the giant laugh. The second time, Sir Gawain called out and asked him to hurry up. But the third time, Sir Gawain neither flinched nor called out. Down came the axe. Sir Gawain closed his eyes. But when he opened them, he realised he had a cut to his neck. But when he turned, there where the giant had stood, now stood the lord of the castle. Sir Gawain, he said, I have spared your life, for you have truly shown that you are a man of honour as well of one of bravery. There is a cut to your neck, and that is for the girdle my wife gave you. Stunned, Sir Gawain offered up the girdle. No, no, you keep that as a token of this adventure. Your debts are clear. Sir Gawain headed back to Camelot to great celebrations. But the scar on his neck always reminded him of the time he met the giant that was the Green Knight. There, one of the legends of King Arthur and his knights. Next week, my Uncle Flinders will have yet another of his favourite stories. <laughs>